Hello, good to see you again on the Peace, Knowledge, and Wisdom YouTube channel. Glad you're with us today. We have another fantastic show. As always, I just want to let you know that the purpose of our discussion is to uplift ideas, information, and viewpoints that promote peace, knowledge, and wisdom. The guests on our shows are free to state their viewpoints. However, they are not necessarily the viewpoints of myself, nor the Peace, Knowledge, and Wisdom channel. We want you to hit that share button so you can share it with all your friends and family. We also want you to hit that subscribe button. We want to make sure you're part of this family as we get this information out to our community. You want to hit the like button so that we know that you like the content that we're providing for you. And then last but not least, hit the bell. That bell is going to make you get all the notifications as soon as we upload these fantastic shows. Hit all when that drop down box comes when you hit the bell button so that you get all the shows and you're notified of them. So now buckle up. Here's a great show in store for you. Peace. Hey guys, I'm back again here on um, Peace, Knowledge, and Wisdom. I'm here with two guys. I'm down in the Wheeling area now in the Ohio Valley. We're looking, we're looking for people in this area and we're talking about the black experience in America. Not just nationally, but also locally. And now we're in the Ohio Valley down here in Wheeling and I got two guys that's well known in these parts. And to others that don't know them, I'm glad to um, have the opportunity to introduce you to them. I got Mr. Ron Scott Jr. here to my left. How you doing, Ron? I'm good, good. And then off to my far left, it's going to be uh, Daryl Boogie Johnson. Pleased to talk to you this evening. Um, what I'm going to do today is we're going to have a couple issues we're going to talk about with Boogie. He's here. One of his expertise out of many is I want to talk to him about the, the experience of um, his experience as being a black football player in the Ohio Valley uh, and an accomplished one as well. Not only that, also being an avid and a very good youth football coach. And he has given back to the community. Uh, God given him a talent and he's decided to bring that back to his community. And there's been so many kids over the years that have benefited from him. And uh, we want to thank him during this time. But I just want him to give us a little uh a little talk on what he's experienced in those two realms. And then Mr. Johnson, I mean, Mr. Scott, rather, I found out that he was in the NAACP oh, at yeah. one time. I found out that he also is a uh, Moore, Morehouse mm -hmm. uh, attendee for a couple of years down in Morehouse. And so he's going to talk a little bit about his early, his early, uh, um, I guess you could say, secondary education experience. I want to talk about that a little bit as it relates to uh, I'd say the education within the black community, uh, some of the things that you experienced in the higher, um, the higher learning areas, uh, we'll touch base on that. And then a little bit about your civil rights history and some of the things you do as far as serving in community. And so what we'll do is we're going to start off with Mr. Scott here. If you can give us a little bit about you in as brief, brief time as you can. Just... Uh, law, uh, lifelong Ohio Valley resident, born and raised in Wheeling. And uh, I didn't leave. You know, I went to Wheeling Park High School. Okay. And, uh, I didn't uh, leave the area because I went to Morehouse in 1992 and, uh, and stayed there for two years and I came back and started getting to do a lot of counseling work and I started getting more and more involved in the community mm -hmm. and then uh, it kind of led me to where, where I got to be today which is at the YWCA. YWCA. Yeah. What's the YWCA's mission? Oh, they have, I mean, there's several, but it's the, the empowerment of women and elimination of racism. And elimination of, that's a powerful mission statement. It always catches my eyes when I see it. I never knew that until recently. We in Steubenville at our uh, presently now at our YWCA, I have a uh, we have a young lady who was in my church that I met. Actually, I met her when I was in NAACP, but she's also a member of our church, and she recently took over there a couple last couple of years, two or three years. And so I've talked with her a little bit, and in talking with her sometimes down at our office, I've seen that that's their mission, and um, it's right to the point. It's very concise. And that's just something that I don't think our community knew that that's exactly what the YWCA's mission is. So, yeah, and they don't um, play. It's the elimination of racism. Yeah, they don't I mean, words. It, yeah, it's pretty clear. So, therefore, <laughs> anything that you do, that and if you're for that, you have an ally. Yeah. And um, it's and when somebody puts puts that out there, what they're about. Hey, I'm about this, or I'm about the elimination of this. Um, what I like about that is it's a bold statement, and it's easy to be critiqued on. Yeah. You know, so if I come to you with something and it seems that you're not doing that, uh, I can only go back to your words. And right. so um, that's a good thing. So we'll get more into that in a couple of minutes. Uh, Brother Brother Johnson, hey. uh, give me. can you give us a, a, a brief? I know you've done a lot. I don't want to hear about all them thousands of yards, every single <laughs> yard that you uh, rush for. But but in some, in some, 
in, in a small fashion, give us a little bit of what happened there as you tell us a little bit about yourself. Because what I want to do is also craft what I'm thinking that some of those things you guys maybe have molded you to what you are today. There's yes. some experience and things you've picked up along the way. So if there's anything coming to your mind uh, as you do this, hey, we're chopping this up. This is for everybody out there. You never know what somebody else maybe will want to hear or, right. or, or, or you know, do something positive for them. So uh, let's hear a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm Boogie Johnson. Um, I was born and raised in East Wheeling, from Wheeling, Wheeling, West Virginia. Went to Clay School, then went to Wheeling Park High School. And then, um, of course, I had a football scholarship with the Oklahoma State University in 92, okay. in which I played, you know, played as a, I started as a redshirt freshman. Uh, sophomore year, had a, was having a good year, broke my collarbone. And then my junior year, I tore my knee up, which is, that's the story of, the, of uh, about a million kids to tear their knees up. Yeah. And I was one of them, tore my knee up. So I was there for four years, and I came back home. And of course, I had kids. And of course, that's when I, you know, like you said, you won't get into it, but I started working with the Willing Little Patriots also mm -hmm. because I, you know, because of my football background. Right. And I started, I had my two boys. Well, actually, my one son, oldest son, started. And I started help coaching Little Patriots then, and that's when we started. And then it blew up from there. It blew up from there. Good deal. And, and uh, which is how I met you. I met you serving yes. the youth, serving the community in that capacity. And um, it definitely caught my heart. Caught, caught my eye, the passion you had uh, in doing what you were doing. And what also caught my eye was uh, almost every single kid, I could I could tell they looked up to you. Yeah. I could tell uh, that there was that you had a relationship with a lot of the kids. Mm -hmm. Even though your kid was playing, I yes. could see that all the kids were special to you. And that's something that being doing the same thing, getting involved with the youth, um, understanding what that relationship takes, yes. the sacrifice involved in that, the time and all those yeah, things. So it's more than just football. Like that's, true. Said. that's true. That's true. That's uh, true. So, so in doing that, I'm gonna start with you, Boogie, because I wanna I wanna go back to something you said, and and, and I know you're a humble guy uh, to some extent, anyway, from yeah. the dealings I've had with you. But you made a statement that I wanted uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit. You said, and of course, I got a scholarship to Oklahoma State. Now, I know you were just talking yes. briefly, but when you said, of course, that's not always, that's not something to be taken lightly, meaning I assume in order to get a scholarship, you must have been pretty good. So give me a little bit about what that pretty good was. Well, I mean, of course, I, I was, I won the Kennedy Award in West Virginia, which is the West Virginia Player of the Year, like the Heisman of the state. Okay. I had, my senior year, I ran for almost 2,100 yards and okay. 36 touchdowns. 20, senior your senior year, you ran for 2,100 yards. Mm -hmm. And how many games? Uh, actually, you guys won the state, correct? We got beaten the state championship. So okay, we've so been 14 games, okay. but six of them only played the first half. Okay, so yeah. so so that's three games really you didn't play. You yes. played three full games and yeah. six games. Um, so that's, that's basically would be, what, 11 games? Yep. So you almost average about 200 yards a game, basically. Yeah, close. Yep, right around there. Close yep. to 200 yards a game, about 180 yards a game. Um, and how many touchdowns? 36. 36. Yep. So you was romping and stomping. No. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Man, I mean, uh, <laughs> because you don't see that that often. I mean, you do get guys like Tavion. Yes. The monster. Yes. Tavion I, I, Crawford, I've seen him. him. And, um, you know, to me, he was one of the top three best backs ever I've oh, ever man. seen. Runs hard. Uh, and, and, and probably third, the first back, I, best back I've ever seen play. Fifth, I mean, meet my eyes see. It was uh, Tyrell Sutton. I remember Tyrus. I went to a game in Northwestern. Yeah, he ended up going to Northwestern, but he yes. played for uh, Akron Hoban. Akron Hoban, yes. Yeah, and I watched a game against him in Cleveland Benedictine, and he ran for I, I want to say about five touchdowns and about two hundred eighty yards in in two and a half quarters. It's crazy. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And, yeah, and I said Cleveland Benedictine. Cleveland Benedictine is tough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't like do that to them. Exactly. So when I when I see that, I see those numbers. I respect it obviously, and it shows what kind of athlete you were at the time, and it shows why. You got a scholarship mm -hmm. to Oklahoma State. Yeah. Um, and you followed a couple other backs in their careers there. That's, that's tell the audience that's the, backs the reason I even chose Oklahoma State coming out was because of Barry Sanders. Okay. Especially Barry. But Thurman Thomas was there also. Yeah. And a lot of people, some people say I just look like Thurman, but of yeah. course everybody wanted to run like Barry. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. But yeah. So so um so you got he got all them yards. And you went to school with him, correct? Oh yeah. 
And so I'm sure that uh, you guys grew up together. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So I'm sure you guys played some throw up and kill. You guys played some sandlot <laughs> ball, some tackle <clears throat> football in somebody's backyard. So you made him. <laughs> now, you can take any credit for that. There you, you know? go. Hey, listen, listen. We all got to get our credit. Uh, yeah. I played basketball for Big Red and the all time leading scorer in, in boys' uh, point scored is uh, Troy Smith. I, mean, I graduated with Troy. Troy. I graduated with yes. Troy. And so, you know, if he didn't dominate me like he did in practice, he yes. would have never understood who dominated others. <laughs> so I gotta take I gotta take some credit for that. So yeah. So um, growing up in Wheeling, West Virginia, I guess would have been you graduated what, 92, 93? 92, 93. So growing up in the eighties in West Wheeling, West Virginia, the black experience, was oh. it something that was at the time noticeable to you? And what was noticed? I'll get. Let me get the first. Now. Go I'll ahead. Get it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, we grew up, and of course, East Wheeling was supposedly where all the blacks lived. Was in East okay. Wheeling. Okay. Now, see, it flip flop because when my mom and my older, the older people, they said all the blacks lived in South Wheeling at yes. the time, but then it flipped. Okay. So when I grew up, we were all in East Wheeling, and more of the white people lived in South Wheeling. I see. But Wheeling Junior High School, Wheeling Junior, which is middle school now. Yes. Was in South Wheeling. Okay, now so where, where is that at? It's where is it considered South Wheeling. South Wheeling is where Lowe's is at now. Right. The new Lowe's. Okay, and um, I've always used 29th Street. 20, I feel like that's like a once you go past 29th Street, okay. towards, towards well beside you in South. Wheeling. Where, where the old hills used to be down okay. that area, mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, now where area. is East Wheeling? East Wheeling's right here where we're at. Okay, so downtown. <laughs> downtown is East Wheeling. Downtown is East Wheeling. Yeah, that's where you grew up at, and it's, it's around this, this area. Around this area. Okay. Yes. And actually, so back in junior high, it was a, like, of course, when we, we came from Clay School. Now, Clay School okay. was predominantly black. Well, mm -hmm. It was a mixture, but it's predominantly where all the blacks right. went. Right. It so, was predominantly black right. because the other school probably had hardly no blacks. No blacks, right. exactly. So, okay. Exactly. Because we still had white kids in Clay yeah, School. Yeah, exactly. That's just how it was. So right. we all, we all like, like Ron stated earlier before we got on camera, that when we all came together to win junior high, yes. like you brought three or four elementary schools in the one. Yes. But bringing Clay. Now, these other schools, like, you know, like Ron might have been one or two, three blacks at, at Richie. Okay. okay. And then you're talking all of us coming all in the one. And it was crazy. Now, what was the school in, in Southwood? Richie. Richie. There was Richie. Then there was uh, Madison. And then there was, uh, I think there was three. Okay. At least, th at least yeah, that was that was it. Clay, Richie, Richie and Madison. And Madison. Clay, Madison. Madison. Okay. And you guys were at Clay. No, we were at Clay. I well, I was on 14th Street. Our house burned down, so okay. we moved to Center Wheeling. So I went to Richie. So he ended up having to go to Richie. Oh, I see. So yeah, okay. he put. But you guys all played together. But you went to yes. different schools. Different schools until we got to junior high. Until you yeah. got to junior, junior high. high. Okay. Then we also so did it brought all the different the different diversity you know it was crazy because the people from Richie weren't used to seeing this many blacks walking down the hallway right, right, then of right. course but see we're different blacks are different it didn't bother us seeing the white people come down the hallway because we've seen black we seen white yes. people before but you know it's a shock to them okay. at that age coming in that junior yes, high yes, like whoa yes, yes, yes. like whoa just too so what's some of the things you had to deal with that, that you that you can you know what's some of the things that you look at that you had to deal with that maybe Savion, which is your son, which other son's name? Amari. Amari. Yes. Okay. That he never had to deal they with. They never had to deal. We used to get chased home. Okay. From William Jr. High dances. Yes. Now we're 13, 14 maybe, 12, yeah. 13, 14. Grown men with bats and chains chasing okay. us. Hold on one second. Well. And, I, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to make sure I kind of, uh, I want to make sure I highlight this. Is he lying? Oh, not at all. So you had the same experience. Yeah, we <laughs> were at the same middle school. Okay. I can remember. Because, hold on. I, I, uh, I'm older than you guys, about 10 years older. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, you know, I'm from Steubenville. And we went to dances. That never happened. See. So the only reason I say that is we had some stuff I could probably talk about. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing that that's the type of experience you had here. Oh, it was unbelievable. Because to me, it takes something to get through that. Oh yeah, it, and it puts something in your mind as as a kid. Yes, and so you, if you come out of it fairly soon, maybe when you get into high school, it's still yeah. something that's in you when you go somewhere else right. to wonder if you might have to experience that at another level. A lot of my friends couldn't handle it. I'm telling you right now, they okay. couldn't handle it, and, and a lot of them didn't even last junior high because of it. Okay. It affected them in that way that they couldn't be there. Or they and so, what was the alternative? Getting kicked out or being on the streets because they could they they wanted to fight. 
every day. They're like, I'm tired of it. I can't yeah. deal with this. So they would fight and get kicked out of school yeah. and come back and get kicked out of school for fighting. And, you know, and it all flips. And we're like, people didn't understand it, but they're not going to understand it. Now, I wish I had did this reverse, but I'm going to ask you. Uh, growing up, before you got into high school, so your, your, your uh, pre-teenage years, did you have a good life? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I now, this, yeah, because I always look back on it. But I just was happy. Yes. You know, but I, you know, I, other people, if they'd have been in my position, they'd have probably thought of it as terrible. Mm-hmm. But growing up, I was a happy kid. I loved yeah, it. Did. So you loved Willie. Mm-hmm. I okay. still do. Truly. And you still do. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you guys both serve in here now, the community. Yep. Yeah. And that just shows our perseverance, I think, as a people. Yep. But um, when you got home from being chased, oh. did, did you go back to any dances after that? Well, I mean, yeah, if you didn't want to go to dances, <laughs> so that's how. So maybe that's one way you guys became such good athletes. Listen, <laughs> hey, listen, listen. They weren't gonna catch us. Listen, listen. You better come because we was running. Yeah, okay. I remember okay. being with a group of guys walking through. I hope you remember this. They were walking by because they would be at that old Dairy Queen. Mm, yes. And I thought yes. it was over. Like they gonna get us. And uh, yes. and uh, what a recognized bug. Yes, is that right. And it was like we got a pass. We yes. got to keep on going. And, and, Everybody got and on. That's recognized him because of, of, of sports. sports. Okay, so now because you're a junior. What you're in middle school at this time? In middle school. So you were also obviously you were good in middle school also. Mm-hmm. And so he, there was a certain amount of respect yeah. he's willing to give you because of that. So in other words, he decided not to disrespect yeah. you for your color mm-hmm. because of the respect yeah. he had for your athletic because ability. ability. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Unbelievable, exactly. isn't it? Oh, and it, it was, was undeniable too. Like people, I mean, they just didn't yeah. want, you know, hey, that's yeah. a book. Book. Yeah. Let, let him go. <laughs> yes. I'm like, yeah, let us go. Let all of us go. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, um Okay, let's let's move on and get to high school now. So in high school, a little less of that, I presume. Yeah, I think at least well, that overt. Yeah, you weren't gonna chase us now. We're grown because <laughs> yeah. now let me lie now, Mac, listen. When I'm saying we were getting chased, I'm talking about was, these were 18 year olds and set. These weren't oh, regular. Okay. We were not talking about middle school yeah. kids. No. no. These oh, are older okay. 18 year olds, yeah. 17 year olds, and high school with good 13, 14 year old kids. Right. So, so that's why we ran. Or men in cars, men in cars, driving, cars by, driving. Yelling yelling stuff, or throw stuff. Yeah. So they were almost doing this as recreation, something they did. Oh, Let's go and chase some black kids. Mm-hmm. They probably use different words. Mm-hmm. But, um, okay. And, and so now let me ask you this. Um, was it was it common for that to happen? Meaning, um, there there were probably some black kids that you see as you grew up that you didn't necessarily hang with. Yeah, they had another group. Yeah, or do you feel they experienced the same thing? Did they somewhere else that, or were you guys just always causing trouble when you got oh, no. bad? I think it was <laughs> they were looking to find a black kid that did not have that, that experience. Part. So all, all of them. Yeah, there's all, no all of us. Oh, yes, I okay. think all of us definitely. Okay. I mean, now to an extent, I, I would say some of us worse than others. Yes. But that yes. was definitely that. And, and Paul, it could have been because you were out more often. Out more often. Or in an area mm-hmm. or doing things that you kind of risk that that mm-hmm. type of a thing. Yeah. Um, when you got chased, did they chase you all into your doorstep or to your neighborhood or to your street? Oh, it, they, they knew not to come in these women. Oh, yeah, they were Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It only oh, went to, okay. a, to a... You remember the tunnel... <laughs> That tunnel yeah. go all listen back by the, where that other dairy the queen stuff is. Back, yeah. so you, there was a tunnel. Okay. Now we could run, we could walk, we could climb over this fence from East do East Wing down like 18th Street. You come to the tunnel and you're almost in South William when you came out the other end. Okay. So we, this time we went running. Now you can't see, see coming coming through yeah. the air. In the broad daylight, you can't see your hand like that. So we went a couple times, we hit that tunnel running full speed, you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and they knew they couldn't come out to the other side of that tunnel. No they knew that much. Yes. Oh, it was, but okay, it was, um, okay, and it's it, oh man, it's just something. Um, so this is going on, and where you guys get, I mean, in uh, Wheeling, and you guys get to high school age, and you're in high school. You are a star now. You're coming in your own as a young man. Did you play sports? Oh, I, I tried. Okay, <laughs> basketball, baseball, football, football, football. So you were on the football team while he was playing. Did you play all four mm-hmm. years? No, no, I, I stopped playing when I was a. Uh, uh, 10th grade. 10th grade was last okay. year. Okay. So, so you're in school. He um, always having the thoughts that you were in college. Yeah. 
Okay, so you always you already got good grades. My grades were good, but they're not as good as they could have been. Yeah, you I had distractions like everybody harder. else. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but still, college was yeah. was one of the. I was always trying really to be good. like a creative type of dude. Like I wanted to do yeah, like he was theater active. stuff. He was, he was all, all that. that. Yeah, oh, he did all that. Oh, See, okay. we all looked up to him in that area. <laughs> okay, because all of us, you know, we were. You know, me and Mike, and we were all just football, basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys yeah. were jocks, and, Ron, and he was smart. Ron was that guy we knew was going to be the guy. Yes. The, the smart, the actor. He was going to be that. that okay. Type. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So you were, you were everybody's OJ. And he was everybody's Denzel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet you could put okay. it that way. At that time. Yes. Anyway, yes. Okay. So, yes. um, okay. So we, we get to high school. Um, you're, you're on track. We're in Wheeling. In high school, um, being in the high school, politics of the school, did any of that hinder you in your, now, in your classroom I exploits? I would like to talk a little bit more about this because yeah, I don't want there to ever, because I don't want any issues because, you know, yeah. the book still does a ton of stuff with our high school, a high school right. that we both graduated from. Right. Now, I can right. speak a lot more freely because I don't have any ramifications. Oh, Right, right. And stuff that I would ever right. have to right. say. And so let me say this. We're I, different. I, I agree. And I like that you separated that mm -hmm. because this is a look back and, and we're going to keep it as truthful as we can. Right. Mm -hmm. But just to enter, just for um, for knowledge that everybody knows, because what I'm trying to get to is that um, our black experience has been such that no matter what we've been through, we've been able to make lemonade out of lemonade. Yes. Out of lemons mm -hmm. along the way. Um There'll be other shows, there'll be other topics that we need to drive home the point of what we went through that was bad and why we went through the shame. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to get in that right now. Yes. I do wanna but I do wanna walk and say, hey, wasn't a piece of cake for you to get to where you got to, wasn't a piece of cake for you to get to where you get you got through, mm -hmm. but you got through. Yes. And so again, I like you to differentiate that. He's still serving at the uh yeah. at Wheeling Park. Doing amazing stuff up Doing there. amazing stuff, obviously, and I know he's respected there. Yeah. But um so yeah, let's hear about your experience. Yeah. Which go from there. Which was is probably very similar to Bush as well. Right. Because it was it wasn't the same as us getting chased through with all that, but it was very different. Yes. Like there were High schools where I learned about like a lot of unwritten and unspoken rules. Okay. Like there was a like there was going back since the beginning of, of our high school. There was this like unspoken and unwritten rule that the black kids didn't go to the basement. It's still there, and it's like still there to this day. That's something that it was amazing to me because no, no, wait, what you mean because they don't want to. <laughs> Well, let me just say this. Because you are not safe. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Yeah, okay. you are not safe in the basement. I see. So in other words, if something happened in the basement, you can, talk, you can tell somebody it happened, you know, but they, oh, yeah. nothing's going to get done. That was yeah. a free zone. Right. So, so um, I know, for instance, we had a situation uh, in Steubenville. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Steubenville and all, but when you, if you come off around 7, it's called Lincoln Avenue. Yeah. It's the back road going, you can go to the mall all the way to Lincoln mm -hmm. Avenue. But living in that side of the uh, south end, the project area, yes. You stayed in that area. If you went up on the hill, that's one thing. But you also might not want to go to Lincoln Avenue, you know what I mean, because there was trouble back down there. Mm -hmm. So you just didn't go. No. Yeah. Right. And it was kind of unspoken also. Mm -hmm. Like, if you got caught down there, you may have got jumped. Right. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody going all the way down to Lincoln Avenue because, <laughs> Man, you know, that's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is, you go to the basement, something could happen. Yeah, now imagine go. that Lincoln Avenue experience in a school. Like, you're supposed to learn this stuff at this school, yes. but there's a spot that you just know yeah. that you shouldn't go. And it was the vocational department, so there were, like, legitimate careers, like, you well, could, all yeah, okay. auto body, all that sort so of stuff. So let me ask you this. Was it to the extent that, let's say you're a freshman or a sophomore, and you decide to sign up for a class, and somebody lets you know, you can't sign up for that class because the class is in the basement? I don't know if the staff would stop you. But well, not the staff. I mean, other like, people by saying, what are you doing? Do you want to you got class in the basement? <laughs> And they're like, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to take one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. And there might be a kid or two that said, man, I took a class down and everything was yeah. okay. That yeah. might, you might get a year of that. Yeah, you might get a year of that. But for, 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 the, most for part, the most part, you just yeah. don't do that. I mean, and there were other, there were, there was a, when we were there, there was a North Commons and a South Commons where you ate at. Okay. And you did not eat in the South, South Commons. Commons. If you were black, you black <laughs> ate at the North. <laughs> You there might be no, one. that's not still the same, I'm sure. <laughs> no, no, no. One yeah, I'm sure that. One's on, one's on. I was going to say, I'm sure that's not the same. <laughs> yes. Um, 
unbelievable. And so, you know, those are those are things that in a future time we'll sit down and talk about more because I want to do one on education as just I'll be doing topics of just education. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll we'll stop and talk about that at a, at a future time. Um, but I want to continue on to so you get through not being in the basement. Yeah. You get to the point where you're going to decide to possibly go to college. How was that choice made? Uh, it was. I, I knew I wanted to go, okay. but um, my interactions with a lot of like the guidance counselors and stuff. Yeah. I, I I knew initially that I was getting a different vibe. Okay. Like I had to research a lot of this stuff on my own because most of my I was getting pushed to uh, the community college that we had here. Like, mm -hmm. You gotta. You know, there's nothing wrong with Northern. Northern's a good spot. You know, right. maybe if you're graded even better, maybe even uh, uh, West Liberty. You yeah, never okay. know, man. You, you, okay. you, the sky's the limit. But to them, right. Northern was the sky for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I looked at a school called like High Point in North Carolina, and then I looked. Okay. I found out about Morehouse. And you pretty much did this on your own. Yeah. Now, when you find out about Morehouse, what attracted you to Morehouse? It's so strange. You know, what got me about Morehouse. What's that? The movie Boys in the Hood. Yes. Okay. At the end of the movie, Trey was like, "Say, Trey went to Morehouse College." I was like, "Okay, so, let me so, check that so, out." So, did you decide to look up Morehouse, or did Morehouse come across your vision, and then you remembered Boys in the Hood? No, I saw Boys in the Hood, and I said, "I'm gonna check what what they got at Morehouse." Oh, okay. And I found out they said okay. they had the most black professionals at that time yes. were coming yes. out of that place. Yes, still do. I said, "I gotta go. I gotta still at least do. try it." And I didn't. I wasn't sure they'd even accept me, but they did. Right, right, right. And I got to go down. Okay. Um, Boog, your experience was letters. Yes. They start coming in. <laughs> phone calls. Yeah. Start coming in. Who took those phone calls for you? Well, I, my mom took some when I went home. Of course, I, I took a lot of them, but okay. they called the school also. Okay. So I would, they get If you don't mind saying, was it just you and your mom? Was your dad Just me and my mom. Just okay. me and my mom. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Only child. You're the only child. Only child. So your mom was a single parent? Yep. For most of your life? Mm -hmm. for, all, okay. for all of my life. For all your life. Okay. All my life. So so your mom has this athlete. Uh, mom always at your games and things oh, like yeah, that. every game. So she's boogie. Acting crazy. Yep. Boogie number one. <laughs> like, acting yes. crazy. Good deal. So like yep. like LeBron's mom. Yep. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. um, so uh, or like, Le or like, Le uh, um, not like LeVar Ball. 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 <laughs> no, not like LeVar. <laughs> but like LeBron's mom. Like okay. LeBron's mom. So um, calls start coming in. Um, letters start coming in. She mm -hmm. doesn't know nothing was going on. She don't know what the, the proper protocol is. She, she don't know no what clue. to listen for. Nor did yeah. you. No, not really. Okay. No. And but but somehow Oklahoma State. Was there anybody else in the running? Kansas. State. In your mind. Yes. Well, I it was I there was I, I got offered a bunch of different places, but my last my final places was Kansas State, Washington State, Oklahoma State, and Virginia Tech. Now West Virginia. Yes. Let me go and touch on West Virginia real yes. quick. West Virginia didn't recruit me okay. early until they found out that all these other schools were coming after me. Then Don Nealon came and picked, they came and picked me up okay. from East Willing. Now, that was a crazy story. Okay. Because, you know, I'm in East Willing. Okay. Here comes Don Nealon in a car. They picked okay. me up in a car, took me back to Morgantown. Yeah. And then, they, then they, as we got there, they told me they didn't have any scholarships left. They couldn't give me a scholarship until the second semester. Yes. Now, I'm sitting there thinking, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Washington. So let me ask you, if they had had a scholarship, do you think you would have went if they had gave you offered you full ride? You probably would have went. So you probably would have went to West probably. Virginia instead of because it's closer to home, right? And of course, that's the biggest thing you hear around here is West Virginia. Exactly. From, Were you a West Virginia fan? I still am, You're except still when they play Oklahoma State. Right. <laughs> but you became a West Virginia. You became an Oklahoma State fan because they offered you a full ride, and you exactly. ended up going. There. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, okay. Um, so you go to you go to uh, Oklahoma State, and your choice basically came down to. Um, were they the only one to offer you a scholarship? No. Kansas State offered. Washington State offered. So your choice was Hawaii. Between, oh, okay. Even Hawaii offered. My, Hawaii, <laughs> Hawaii offered. Sure, you never made a trip. They won't. They don't do it until you commit. Now, okay. They okay. They're losing too much money. <laughs> you got to commit. And um, I'm, but yeah, I mean, of course, all the Mac schools. Marshall offered me. Okay. Ohio, Ohio, U, you okay. know, Bowling Green. Ball, they all offered me. I had, a, I had a, good, a big handful of them. Nice. And there was a few big ones I had. The Washington. Okay. Actually, I talked to Drew Bledsoe. Called yeah. me as a recruiting trip for Washington, for Washington State. State. He yeah. was a singer. Yeah, he recruit. Yeah, yeah talked to him on the phone. Did. Okay, so, um, so we're gonna stop here for the first part. And we're going to pick up on two parts. You guys still have a couple minutes to yeah. finish this. Um, and we're going to end here with basically both of both of you heading to college. Yes. Right. Morehouse, Oklahoma State, 
And then we're going to pick up in the second part. And I want to talk a little bit about your college experiences, but then how you received back in West Virginia, your hometown, and how you decided to get into being a, being a servant of your community, because both of you had basically decide, had decided at some point in your lives to become a servant in the Ohio Valley here in Wheeling, West Virginia. So we'll be right back with part two of this interview. As we are back uh, here on Peace, Knowledge, and Wisdom. And again, we're second part of this interview with uh, Mr. Boogie Johnson and also Mr. Ron Scott. And what we've heard in the first part has been very interesting, just listening to a couple gentlemen who are parts of the community, well-known in their community, who started from childhood living in, in this Ohio Valley area, which is Wheeling, and working their way all the way up to college and telling us a little about their experiences. And now in the second part, what we're going to try to do is get into what drove them to be community servants. Both of them are in community service and have been in community service. And I wanted to see kind of what their experience has been and why they decided to do this. And we're going to start with Ron, who when we left off in the first part, Morehouse is oh, what yeah. you decided to do. And you wind up in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. What year is this? Uh, 1992. So in 1992, you go from Wheeling, West Virginia, and you end up in Atlanta, Georgia. And Ron, young Ron Scott, sees what when he comes into Atlanta? <laughs> uh, more black people than I've probably ever seen in my life. Like okay. it was a complete culture shock, which I thought was odd because okay. you know this is the, the experience I signed up for. You know, right. I'm trying to go to this historically black school, and I got there, and I, uh, I tell folks it was six months before I saw a white person. Exactly. It wasn't on TV. Yeah, and uh, but it was amazing. Like it, it, it was, it was truly an amazing experience just to be there and see all of that. Were you well received? That, oh, yeah. By the people that you did, by the, you know, by the, by the row C. Did, did you get a lot of questions about West Virginia? Oh, yes, because they do this thing when you first get there. It's like a the roll call where all the students are in the yeah. auditorium. They're yelling out, like, Michigan. I'm like, yeah. They, every state. And they, I think just obligatorily, they were like, hey, West Virginia. And they was like, yay. In the back <laughs> of me. There's no other person that said West no, Virginia, I'm sure. Okay. Nobody. Okay. And and but but and still your your experience was very good, huh? Oh, How yeah. was the class work? What classes did you do? What did you major in? Uh, my major when I first went down there was computer science. Okay. And uh, I remember switching it to communications because I didn't realize how much math was in computer science. Uh, okay. And uh, it it was like my my high school had prepared me in a way for college stuff, right. but uh, I wasn't ready for the experience of it okay. because. Uh, at the AUC was what they called the is the Atlanta University Center because there's okay. Morehouse, Spellman, Clark, and Morris Brown are all in walking distance of each other. Okay, yeah. So, so you'll yeah. be walking the class and you'll walk through like 15 different events. Like there's a drum circle, there's a, a rap video, there's a freestyle cipher, there's <laughs> everything's happening. Yeah. And I wasn't ready for all of that. So you know, a lot of my freshman year, I was just, uh, just soaking up the experience. That. Yeah. <laughs> But the classes were, I mean, they were thought-provoking, they were intriguing. I mean, you'd have a, I went to a, my history class one time, our guest speaker, or I guess the, we just called him our academic guest. It was yes. an ice cube. Is that he right? He just hangs out because he knows the professor, and yeah, so that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. It was just mind-blowing for me. Now, let me ask you, uh, okay, and then you went on from Morehouse, why? Uh, finances. Finances. Yeah, it's yeah. A, a college, even now, today, even more so now. It's just it's such a financial strain on you. Yeah. And uh, when you couldn't get, I didn't get uh, in-state tuition or any of that sort of yes, stuff. So yes. it just started to rack up and rack up. And after that second year, I had to leave. Real, real quick, I'll make a point with the with the uh, with our audience and with you guys. Something that I just found out. And you may be aware of it, but I wasn't. Um, do you know that uh, HBCUs, they don't have big endowments at all, unfortunately. Yes, I know. And I just found out that the, the, le the biggest endowment is Howard's. Yes. And Howard's is five hundred million is their endowment. And I said, man, I said that's you know it's a lot of money, five hundred million dollars. Next is a a college, oh Spellman. Mm -hmm. And they're like three hundred million. The next ten are all under like under a hundred million their endowment. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know Harvard's endowment is like thirty billion dollars? Wow. Like, so it just shows you the difference. Yeah, so, the so when you said finances, Morehouse wasn't even in the top three of the HBCUs, oh, no. and it's one of the most well known. And like you said, you had told me off, off camera that there's a they talk about it's got the most professionals ever yeah, come from Morehouse. 
Um, and so you're there, finances chase you out, part of that problem. They don't have a big endowment, so they don't give out as much money as some other uh, universities and colleges give out. Um, and I know that firsthand. My son was accepted to Morehouse. And just oh, for a bit. Yes, he was accepted to Morehouse. And what's funny was my son was accepted by about, about 12 colleges altogether, maybe. And um, he played football, but when, when we started his process, he was a scholar student, and he always had wanted to be a lawyer. And when I first started this process, never been involved in it before, I Googled uh, good law schools. Then I realized they were all law schools. We're looking for undergrad. Yeah. And I said, so I, what I put in next was best, best academic schools or something like that. And, and for Ohio, almost everything that came up were Division three schools, private schools like Oberlin, uh -huh. uh, Otterbein, Worcester, uh -huh. uh, Westminster, which is in PA, yeah. uh, Washington Jefferson, yeah, that's um, great um, Capitol and Columbus, uh, several others. But I didn't know anything, so I just filled out applications for him. It was early, did this. And I would say we filled out maybe, let's say, eight in a, in a probably October, maybe even a little bit before that. Um, he f put the applications in. They sent him something. He had to send in some transcripts and things. I'd say in about a month, maybe a month and a half, he had an acceptance letter from, about, from all of them. And all of them had at least a half scholarship they gave him. Basically, they gave him tuition and not board was basically how it worked out. Mm -hmm. But when they first sent us the letters, they would say $20,000 scholarship, $24,000 scholarship, $18,000 scholarship. So we're thinking, man, you know, he's got yeah, scholarships. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing we're thinking is full rides. Yeah. Come to find out these private schools are $40,000 a year, year. $38,000 a year, $44,000 a year. year. <laughs> $44, a year. A year. We didn't know that. Yes. We didn't realize they were half scholarships. Yes. We thought they were full rides, yes. and we didn't understand the room and board type thing. Yes. Anyway, to make a long story short, he gets accepted about 10 all the way through. One of the places he applied to is Morehouse. He didn't get his accepted letter until, from Morehouse until March of the following year. What? When he finally got it, there was no money attached to it. So the point was, we would have loved if he went earlier to, to maybe try to find a way for him to go. Mm -hmm. But by then, we'd already got a package back from um, Ohio Wesleyan. Quick. Yeah, and Worcester. Wow. And so I know what you mean by uh, money mm -hmm. as an easy way. So uh, enough about me. I didn't mean to put too much time taking away from you. But you are now decided money is going to cause you not to be able to stay at Morehouse. We had a wonderful experience, uh, a basically all-black experience yeah. uh, mm -hmm. as it relates to the culture that now you're, in, you're involved in. And because you don't have the money, you go to West Liberty now. Mm -hmm. Okay, how was that choice? Was that just you were coming back home and you definitely wanted a degree? You definitely wanted to continue your education, and West Liberty afforded you that opportunity. Well, no, there was a, a, a huge amount of time in between that. When I came home from Morehouse, oh, okay. I came back to Wheeling, and I was, in a, in a lot of ways, feeling really defeated. Like I yeah. just kind of felt like this wasn't going to be the route for me, and then I. I started hanging out with my cousins a lot more, and I'm like, you know what, maybe this wasn't what I was supposed to do. Right. But uh, my mother is, is the type of person that she's not gonna let me fall too far, so I knew I always had to work, and I knew I always had to do something yes. along the, the, the right things to do. Right, right. So I eventually started working and just started doing the counseling stuff without, I mean, with no degree, no experience, oh, okay. I just started doing it, yeah. and, and I, I wanted to try to to see how far I could go without it. Yes. So I got every certification I could get. I, I took every sort of a class that could give me a, it's more of a repertoire when it came to yes, counseling yes. and dealing with folks. So I got certified in everything I could until I got to the point they're like, look man, and if you yeah. want to continue doing it, you're gonna have to get some sort of degree. So I that's see. when I went to Westlake. Uh, okay, okay, so you was getting a lot of experience. Yeah. But sooner or later, you have to have that degree. Yeah, you gotta have that. Degree. Then you got a lot of people get the degree and no experience. Kind of like that <laughs> that catch twenty two yeah. they put you in, and you know. And, but um, but okay. So you got into counseling, then you went to West Liberty. Mm -hmm. um, so you're much older now. Yeah. So going to West Liberty, you was already used to understanding oh, yeah. what happened in Atlanta. Coming back, you're basically a man now, yeah. and you see the differences. So going to West Liberty, you didn't necessarily compare the two. You just yeah. was trying to finish your degree. Mm -hmm. 
then you decided to get into counseling. Mm -hmm. That led you to see what? What did you see now as a black man in West Virginia, in Wheeling, West Virginia? Counseling, what type of counseling were you doing? I started with addiction studies, because that was okay. one of my major ones. And I remember it seemed like I was always like a, I felt like a fireman, because I was always being called to put out uh, these yeah. fires when it comes to the black kids or black families. And exactly. kind of, I remember feeling like, uh, let's say if I was working at the high school and a black family showed up very upset, okay. I, they would hit me on a walkie immediately. Like, Mr. Scott, we need you to come to the front because they didn't have the experience. <laughs> almost felt like they were going to fight them for something. What? Black folks, like black families. But the counseling parents. was, what did you call it, the counseling? Addiction studies. Addiction. I was supposed to be there primarily for for kids that had issues with substances, but it turned into something. I see what you're saying. So what you were doing, okay, you were a counselor as far as uh, substance abuse. Mm -hmm. I see. And then what, but you were working at the school system? Yeah. And you were a counselor, and so it came into any type of intervention, basically. Oh, it turned now, was that any intervention, period, or just with black kids? Oh, period. Period. So yeah. any type of intervention, they would call you. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I learned is that, uh, like, everything I got involved in while I was at Park, like, sometimes you could be like a club advisor, right? Yes. So we had a club that we did. I did kind of geared towards black kids. Yes. I wanted to make sure they had a place. Yes. But what I learned, every club I was involved in yes. became the black club. Uh, like there was a philosophy mm -hmm. club called Mile in Their Shoes. I mm -hmm. went to be the advisor for that club. All the black kids came to that club. Oh, okay. So they were like, oh, hey, this ain't the black club. So, you know, uh, what are y'all yeah. trying to do? Yeah. So oh, now okay. it was kind of like, Mr. Scott, you can get involved in one club because, you know, right. everything turns into the black well, club. Well, did you guys have any black teachers in, at Willing Park when you were in high school? I had one. Just one. How about you? Can you think of anybody other than Mr. Gordon? Oh. Mr. Collins, a counselor. But that's it. Right. What about what about in elementary school or middle school? Elementary school, we had Miss Brown. Well, I, that was my yeah. Clay school. Yeah, I didn't okay. have any. And you didn't have any. And there now, wasn't none at, at Willing Middle, were there? No. Yeah. Really and now, and now, what about when you were as a counselor? How many black teachers then at Willing Park? None. Uh, there was Miss Cox, but that was towards the end. Miss Cox time. is there too. Is she still there? Yes. Okay, so one. Is she the only one now? Okay. And so, any class you were in. It became the black class. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> and that's because kids gravitated to you, right? Okay, and this was without, and I loved it because it was without me saying, "Hey, all the black kids come here," right? And it, it just gives credence to the idea that if black kids, they see people that look like them, they're more prone to gravitate towards that guy. Well, right. I have to say, I'm I'm a paraprofessional one. Yes, but I don't have a teaching degree. Yes, but I'm a paraprofessional. But I, I work with kids with autism. Oh, okay. Special okay. special intervention. Uh, yeah. Or special so, ed, yeah, yeah. Special education. Okay. So uh, that kind of counts, but it doesn't. You know? well, 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 yes and no. I do have black kids in my special education class. No, no, no. And I understand that. And I think that what I, what I love what you said is that in this conversation, from your experience, you told us the story. The reason I say that is I, I, I have had a history of trying to get more black teachers in a school system. And what you just said is so natural. Oh yeah, the kids would come and they would come because you know it was a black you know teacher. Oh, for sure. And they gravitate towards that, and there's something in it that they want to have, they want to do. We already know ahead of time. I asked you that question purposely about your coaches, and you you respect your coaches. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what color they are. Nope. But they happen to all have been pretty much white. Yes. But if they hadn't been black, it's all there's a whole new experience. For you as a kid, mm -hmm. it gives you a role model that you can relate to mm -hmm. because now you can become that. Okay. Right. And again, like I said, it's, it's, it's nothing that it should be just automatic. We understand that because that's what role models are about. If we have more black students, there'd be more black role models. Yeah. Exactly. More black teachers, rather, there'd be more black role models. Yeah. And so you experienced that from just a hands on experience to understand yeah. what it could do. You leave there. How long were you at Willie Park? Eight years. Eight, eight, oh, eight years. Okay. Yeah, I know you went into the NAACP. Mm -hmm. During that time or after that? Uh, it was during. It was a little bit before and during the whole time. Okay. So you went into the NAACP. Come back from uh, Wheeling. You decide to get into counseling. You, you take a lot of classes and you study. You go back to West Liberty to get your degree. During that time or right after that time, you end up going into Wheeling Park, mm -hmm. becoming a substance counselor doing a lot of different things, having different classrooms, experiences,
kids of all of of, of, of all, all colors, but a lot of black kids would always come to your 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 uh, classes. Um, you're in the NAACP in Willing, West Virginia. We're going to come back to you to find out what your experience in the NAACP in West Virginia is like. But now we're going to go to Oklahoma State. We're going to take a trip out west <laughs> where the Cowboys roam, out in the plains. And a young man from Wheeling, West Virginia, who's got some wheels, who's got a resume on the football field, comes into Oklahoma State. What did he see? Just a whole brand new world. Um, okay. Of course, um, like I said earlier, like 90% of the football players are black in Oklahoma State. Now, the, the campus is very diverse. But I mean, of course, it's more white than blacks, yes. but football players are all black. And the crazy part about it is, I, well, I, when I got to Oklahoma State, I realized that I, me being in front of white people was a shock to some of our black football players. Like, uh, they hadn't experienced being around anyone white. Okay. Like, G2, my roommate, I mean, like I told you, he went to um, Houston. Houston. Houston, right. he went to the same high school as um, Vince Young. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Every teacher's black. Right. Everyone, every store you work at is black. Yeah. So we're out. He's asking me, like, how do you, how do you talk to white people? <laughs> like, this is a legit question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they were like in shock. They were like, man, how? I mean, like, because, you know, we he all. He was like, shoot, let me shoot. Let me <laughs> shoot. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, in, in, it was just weird. Like, my friends from Washington, D.C., like, they were just in shock. Yeah. Cultural yeah. shock. They're just like, I've never seen as many white people before. Right. You know, normally it's flipped. You're like, you know, it, it's them. Like, now, did oh you God. get the feeling where, where, whether it was off campus, certain parts of the campus, or, or certain teachers, classes, whatever, where did you, and if you did, ever get that same, did you get that reaction from the white people, you being black? See, I never paid it that much attention. Because remember, I'm from Wheeling. Right. And I'm from where so white eyes are white. You, yes, I'm used to it. Your, yeah, it, it I'm not, you know, I'm not in the shop where there's yeah. all white people in the room. Okay. Or, or in that little area. Because I'm exactly. used to being one of the only blacks there. Right. You know, now some of my, my teammates were like, man. You see how they were looking at me? Yeah, you see how they were looking at me all crazy? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm trying to calm them because they think it's something about to go down every time we go somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, nah. I said, so. Actually, I, I give even, I mean, a lot of my roommates, a lot of my players will tell you, like, Oklahoma State and Stillwater, Oklahoma, of course, yes. it's, a, it's a college campus. It's yes. a, mainly the students, it makes the city of Stillwater. Yes. And they were, you know, we were loved. But, you know, but yes. a lot, like, like Ron said earlier, a lot of us are football players. Yes. So you get treated a little bit differently. Yeah, exactly. You know, you get exactly. treated differently. And um, so our, my experience was a great experience at Oklahoma State, actually. Exactly, right? It really was. You were there for how long? Four years. So you were there all four years, graduated from there? No, no, I didn't graduate from there. I got hurt, and I came back home. Uh, And then I went to, actually, I went to Northern and then took classes at West Liberty also, just like him. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So you were at at Oklahoma State. Uh, You played, you got redshirted your first year? I got redshirted. Was that academic? Was that an academic redshirt? No, it was just a a redshirt because... Because uh, you didn't play. Just didn't play. Okay. Because, you know, they, they, they redshirt a lot of freshmen. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, that still, that still goes on all the mm-hmm. time. Most most guys are redshirt. You know, yes. That's something you do. So then you play, you was a redshirt freshman. Redshirt freshman. I played, started as a redshirt freshman. You started as a redshirt freshman. Mm-hmm. How many games? Almost every game. I, I, actually, I tweaked my knee in the middle of that season. That same knee, I ended up hurting bad. Okay. So I, I probably missed maybe three games. Okay. But I probably started, I started probably Started seven. as a freshman at Oklahoma State. Who was your quarterback? Guy named Gary Porter. Gary Porter. Um, <clears throat> did you play with any pros? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Actually, then I went to, from Gary Porter, which he was a white guy, which is one of my good friends still. Oh, okay. To Tony Jones, who's okay. a black quarterback. I remember that name. And and that was my boy, too. And he ended up taking over. Actually, he was my quarterback the rest of the time. Oh, okay. Tony okay. ended up taking Gary's spot. Yeah. And, um, but. How did you guys do that year? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. What was your record? <laughs> We was, uh, I want to say three and seven. Three and seven. We, we never made it to a bowl game. Who was playing at Oklahoma then? Um, Your freshman year. That's the year you started. I don't know if you remember. See, it's uh, Kale Gundy. Was a Gundy oh, yeah. was a quarterback one year. Yeah. Uh, but actually, we beat Oklahoma. What, what we, we, was we, we were running? We were um, Tyro. Oh, 
You asked me too fast. No problem. If you think about it, just I'm going to think about it. I'm that's fine. That's it. fine. Okay. But so you beat Oklahoma actually, that beat, year? Actually, beat Oklahoma twice when I was there. And you beat Kansas. And we beat Kansas. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> but shoot, we were at the bottom of Kansas State. Okay. But, well, actually, Kansas State, that's when they were just starting to turn their program around. Okay. Snyder. Snyder. And Snyder recruited me. Oh, okay. Snyder recruited me. He stayed got yeah. something. He was still coaching. Still, okay. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, but, um, so, yeah, so Snyder was there. And that, that's where we... Um, Receiver for Seattle Seahawks, the bad boy. Larger? Nope, just right there, just there now. Oh yeah, yeah. The Lock boy, Lock, I played against his dad. Oh, okay. Lock, his oh, dad. At, 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 I can't. Yeah, can't good stay. deal. Good deal. But, so. uh, but of course, I played against Cordell Stewart. Yeah, Missouri. Uh, 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 well, not Missouri, Colorado. Colorado, Colorado quarterback. Yeah, Bienemy. Bienemy uh, and Hagen were gone. That's right. That's right. But I, I went. I played against Michael Westbrook, uh, Charles Johnson. Johnson, Charles Johnson, Charles yeah, Johnson, Johnson with the Steelers. Yep. Yeah. All of them. They were all on that team. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, but they. Uh, but who was their back? They had a good back too, didn't they? Um, he killed himself. Just yeah, killed himself. I can't think of his name. Uh, last year. Yeah, but they had a good back too. Yes. He won the Heisman. Shoot. Oh no. He won the Heisman. He won the Heisman. Um, the enemy didn't win the Heisman. Huh? The enemy didn't win the Heisman. It was him and Darren Hagen. I cannot believe it just slipped my mind. Wait a minute. Ah, mine too. We'll think of it. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, uh, I will. But anyway, they were all Missouri. I mean, uh, Colorado, Colorado, Colorado at the time. 16, um, I think, what, 15 went to the NFL that year off their team. Yes, that year. Man, 15 man. players. Man, you yeah, know what's going on ten, there. There had to, be some, Brown, there had to be some recruiting Brown. violations that year. Because <laughs> they never went before that and never went again. No. <laughs> no, they were loaded. Okay. They were loaded. But it was a great, great experience there. Okay, so you had a good experience at Oklahoma State. You ended up coming back? Yes. But you hurt your knee. You blew it out. What was that, your sophomore year? It was my redshirt junior year. Your redshirt junior year. Yeah. So basically your third year on the field. Yes, fourth year there, oh, third okay. year there. But yeah, tore my knee up pretty bad. And of course, if I would hurt, if this would have been now, I would have been fine. Okay. But that was back in the 90s. Okay. So ACL, that MCLs, yeah. back in the 90s, you're done. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. Were you fast back? Yes. Fast. So you I, have speed. Yes. I was fast. Well, shit, I thought I was fast. Right. Until you get there. Then yeah, you, yeah, everybody, yeah. Everybody well, fast. what I meant was, yeah. were you a power back or you scat back or you yeah. considered a... I could do a, a little of both. A little but bit I, But I still was only 5'8". Well, I was okay. about 200 pounds then. Two, okay. Two, so two, you was two, a fire plug. Yeah. Okay. And you, uh, you um, did you run for 1,000? I never had a th- I had over 1,000, like, as a career, career but okay. I never had a 1,000 yard Good chance. So, basically... Uh, until you got hurt, you had basically a good college football career. Yes, at a, at, a, at a Division One school, you get your ACL. You end up coming back. Yes. What was it like? How did you feel? What did you come? What did you come back to? I came. You know, of course, it, any athlete it's tough because you yeah. think you can still play. You want to play. Yeah. And actually, I did have a. You remember when the Browns left? Yes. When the Browns came back, I yes. actually had a trial. Oh, the okay. Browns. Nice. And my knee wouldn't pass the physical. Okay. My knee didn't pass it. And then I had surgery on this knee, but they didn't do it right, and it still was it's still messed up oh, yeah. to this day. Oh, yeah. They didn't know what they know now. Yes. They didn't what they do now. But, yeah, I come, so I come back, and, of course, you know, I have my first son, which is Savion. Okay. And then, and then that's when it all really just started, really, right then. Okay. And what did you start doing? Well, initially... The little pictures already started by a guy by the name of Mike Lake. Okay. So instantly, I talked to him instantly. Now this is when CJ Goodwin who plays for you know, yeah, the yeah, yes, yes, yes. They were all playing. Yeah. They were all at that time playing. You okay. know, we never had little league football. Man, time just flies. Yes. <laughs> and so, and so I was like, I talked to Mike Lake. Who Mike Lake? He passed. Yeah. He's a great dude. And uh, so that's how I first got involved. Of course, of course I want to save y'all and play football. Was okay. the and, you know, so, of course, we were working out. Oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah. were getting ready. We tried to sneak him in at six. What year is this? This was probably... 2002? 2000, no. Well, it's, hold on. No, let me see. Save y'all graduated in 2015. So... So, 2002, he was 13. So, this is probably about, what, 90... 2000? Yeah, 2000. Around 2000. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. like that. Yep. And so, of course, we're training. I'm trying to sneak him on playing early at six and all that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, then that's still Valley League. We were all playing in. And, uh, yes. Of course, we had little pictures going, and then that's when they first started. And then, of course, of course, we had, we had some black kids, but there wasn't a ton of black kids. Exactly. And right then, actually, 
Let me, let me roll back a little bit. Go ahead, go ahead. East William Pirate baseball team. Yes. That's where it really started before because we could go T ball and that that's where we started. Yes. East William Pirate baseball. Yeah. And that's when I had all the black kids. Yes. That was when we were one of the only teams with all yeah. blacks on one baseball team. Yep. And uh, and, and you, you let me ask you this just as a side note real quick. You played football. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of black kids to come and play football. Yes. If you had to play baseball at Oklahoma State. And you to stay with baseball, in your opinion, how many black kids you think could have went to the MLB? There'd been a lot. I'm telling <laughs> you, there's a lot. And actually, let me tell you, I played baseball park. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, I was. I I batted 470 as a sophomore. Is that right? I played baseball all three years, and I try to I try to run play track. I mean, I wanted to run track also, but they wouldn't let me do both. Yeah, they wouldn't let me do both. But then I ended up, and actually, Oklahoma State coach what did you wanted me to try, and I said, "There's no way." Because I feel, too much. I feel, especially in this area, if we put as much into baseball as we put in basketball and football, oh. and even a little more, yes. we would create so many more. Because I think our talent, our athleticism that we have, yes. translates to baseball, baseball. in a way mm-hmm. similar to what Lamar Jackson is doing to yes. the quarterback position. Yes. Mm. At the point that you take that skill mm-hmm. that he has – and you decide to build around it, it's it's just it's unstoppable yep. to some point. Mm-hmm. The only thing with baseball is simply we don't put the time, time. in. It's more expensive. It's, expensive. Yes. it's only a, so much ball. And, and because you don't get enough of it, it's hard in the summertime to get all the kids' attention yes. constantly, even yes. the coaches. But what they came up with, and really it was Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Bonds and all of them, and then there's so many guys after that that end up your McCutcheons and things like that. Yes. What they call a five-tool player. Mm-hmm. And now it's got to do with their speed. Yes. Their, their uh, speed. Uh, their throwing. And there's one other thing that was the things that they didn't add to that before. Mm-hmm. But now black kids yes. always, they always have the better arm. They always, always are speed. speed. So when speed came into the game, you know, making, making barely – Barely getting it out to beating it out mm-hmm. to stealing bases. Oh yes, you know to being able to do those things. Um, if we would have been able to concentrate on that, there's so many well, athletes. I in. played baseball all the way through in my yes. senior year. Actually, we had scouts. Me and my, I don't, you know, Mike McLeod. He was oh, a, yeah, yeah, a yeah, big yeah. Mike. Yeah. Well, we our senior year, there were scouts at every one of our games, and I, I had letters from the Braves. I mean, That's everyone, right, right. and they would be behind. They would be down first base line. Timing me down first, like you talking about nervous yeah, yeah. as a seventeen year old kid. Yeah. They're sitting down with the Braves and Pet Pirates, and um, and they moved me throughout the year. They would call and say, "I want to see him in center field this game. I want to see him in left field." Exactly. Yeah, for right. Oh yeah. Where I, where did you normally? Where did you grow up playing? Shortstop, second base. And, so, and, so you were that good. I never and I never played the outfield well, until high school. Well, what's your age with you and Mike? What's the age? Same. We graduated with each other. So you graduated. What, what, what did he play? He, he played. Play? He played actually first base. First base Actually, but Mike was small. Mike actually played the outfield then Did in he? high school. Okay. But then when he got older, he went to the major leagues with the Oakland. He played first. Oh, he moved okay. to first. But like me and him would be in the outfield someday because yeah. uh, they wanted to see my speed. Now, how did you outfield. guys do in high school when you guys played? Decent. We just had no decent. pitching. No pitching. Pitching okay. kills us. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. well, I digress a little bit about. I just wanted to touch some issues on that. So you so you got the little Patriots. You started with the baseball team. Yes. A lot of black kids was there. So you were coaching, and you wanted to make sure your son played. And you start uh, coaching the Willing Patriots. Yes. Um, so now you're a coach. Savion is killing the league. I know this from first time experience. <laughs> um, doing his thing. You're coaching. Uh, what ha- other than other than you? Obviously, your son is already playing. He's doing well. Yes. Uh, if you didn't have Amari, mm-hmm. and Savion leaves the Still Valley League, you'd have still been. Coaching the Patriots, yes or no? Yes, I, I figured that. Yes. I kind of knew that. So yes. I didn't want to. I didn't want to say you would have, but I believe you would. Yes, have. I'm still because it looked like you loved it. What? Yes. Then what? Because it was something that we never had. I think growing up, and we always wanted it. And then I seen as 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 coaching Savion, and it was it became like you said. Here we are. I'm taking seven, eight, nine kids. I'm piling them in a car okay. to go to these games. And, yes. you know, and I'm thinking most of these kids don't have the opportunity. And if we, if I'm not going to give them the opportunity, they're not going to have it. 
So I would do, and I would, you know, I would call my boys, listen, we got to get them to these games. So that's where it all started, the passion for it, and then it just kept growing. And, like, now, even now, with Amari, Amari's last year was this past year. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. How about yeah, that? Yeah. He's done. And I so he's 11. Back. Yeah, well, he's 12 now. He's 12, 12. now. So and he's going to go, he's in the sixth grade? Yep. So he'll be in the seventh yep, grade. Yep, yep, yep. And so his friends, and I had to pick those kids up. Oh, yeah. And we had a bunch of kids, you know, of course, you know. Oh, you yeah. have the money to play. But, you know, we're going to make yeah. them play. We're going to play. Oh, somehow. yeah, we're going to find we're a gonna, way. We're going to figure we're it out. Find a way. And, and that all start. I'm telling you what, Mac, that start from my mom. Yeah. If my mom, to this day, if something happens with anyone in East Willing, yeah. they're calling her. They're calling for her. For a funeral. Yeah. For exactly. anything. Yeah. They know she's going to get the people together to get the food together. She's going to be, that's where it all started for me. So mm-hmm. your service came from your mother, basically. Mm-hmm. It was taught that's where it all started. Seen her doing it. Yep. She basically instilled in you that... If you have, give back. Yes. What about you, Mr. Scott? What you, you got into the point where counseling, do you think that was just something you were good at? Um, it was just a job that was available? You've always been that way? It's like a combination of, of stuff like books. That it, uh, My mother, she's been a nurse. She's a nurse my whole life. Oh, okay. So she's always took care of people. Yes, yes. And then I mixed that with my Aunt Darlene, who had a group called the East Willing mm-hmm. Civics. Yep, okay. And uh, she was always doing stuff in the community and doing little things like garbage cleanups and yeah, this little cool stuff like that. So I just—it was like the two of them okay. just made me want to do something that helped folks and helped the community that that you be out. There. Well, one of the things I want to say here, and then we're going to wrap up this segment, and we're going to do a small segment at the end that's basically going to let you guys talk about you and what you're doing now, and what you feel you're you are, how you feel you fit in the black community in the Ohio Valley. Anything that you want to just talk about, your experience of what you're doing now in coaching, because I know you also coach Willie Park as yeah. a, at the high school level, and then you and your this um, your organization, and I want you to touch on and talk about what you're doing now and where you fit in. And we just left Martin Luther King birthday in January, and we're moving into uh, Black History Month. And so Ron Scott Jr. and, and Daryl Boogie Johnson, where do you fit in Dr. King's dream? Where do you fit in? Where do you want to be seen in black history from either your, your, your kids, kids you've coached, people you've helped? I um, want you to just make a little name for yourself. You know, toot your horn a little bit. Um, or, or let us know what you want to do, what you're trying to accomplish. And um, but we'll go out of that after you guys finish that and we'll end that segment that way. Is that all right? Okay, we're going to take another break here and uh, we'll be right back and go in our last segment and finish up with uh, Daryl Boogie Johnson. And Ron Scott Jr. We'll be back for our last and final segment. Again, we're here talking on peace, knowledge, and wisdom, and we're getting a little bit of an experience in uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, in the Ohio Valley in Wheeling. We're trying to get a, a feel for what the black experience was like for a couple of the, I'm not going to say iconic figures, but uh, very popular figures here in Wheeling. Um, and they have basically lived a life of service in Wheeling and grow up, now they're giving back. And we're going to start off with this final section, uh, final uh, segment, trying to find out what they're doing now, what they've been doing, and where they see their future uh, service going from here. And first, we're going to start with you, Ron. Uh, we're going to pick back up. And you went to the NAACP. You did some counseling in the school system, but you got a new organization. You're wearing the uh, oh, yeah. hoodie now, the Ohio <laughs> Valley African uh, African American Student Association. So give us how that started and what you've been doing with that and where you see it going and, and where everything's going with you. And then Bob will get with you after that and find out a little bit about what you're doing right now, all right? Go ahead, Ron. Well, uh, associate, we call it OVASA because, you know, OVASA. Right? So we won't have to say the whole thing every time. Okay. But we, uh, it, it started with uh, a good friend of mine who he passed away not very long ago. Uh, his name is Michael Green. We used to sit in my uh, apartment and always talk about, you know, how we want to help these kids, how we want to help the environment, how we want to help stuff. And uh, I remember there was a statistic that I learned while I was working at Park that just really got to me. They said that um, we were getting praised at Park because of how our high African American graduation rate. And I was like, that is kind of cool. But when you're working in the school, something didn't feel right about it because okay. the stat got skewed. So if you made it to senior year. Yes, your graduation rate was closer to ninety some percent. So if you expanded it from freshman to senior yes, year, yes. our dropout rate was closer to seventy percent. Yes, so yes. we were like, how can we work on that? And uh, since I'm not uh, a teacher and I don't have, I'm not in the system as far as the school system is concerned yes. because they contract work with me. Yeah, 
we thought um, praise and recognition. That's the only way that we can remember like how we could uh, work and, and, and uplift somebody. Praise yes. and recognition. Yes. So we came up with Ovasa and we had, uh, so we had our first banquet. We honored every African-American student that graduated. I don't care if you barely graduated or if you had a 4.5. Uh-huh. You got a plaque or a uh, certificate and we had a banquet for you. And uh, that was in, man, that was 2010. And okay. we've been working ever mm-hmm. since to just have one at least every year. And we we haven't missed a year, but one year we didn't have a banquet because, you know, it's tough raising the money sometimes. Right, right. It's not necessarily something that's as welcome or supported as you might think. Okay. So for one year, I think 2014, we ended up uh, going to the kids' houses and handing them nice. plaques and handing nice. them certificates because we didn't have to get an opportunity to have the actual banquet. Yeah. But I was doing that sort of work around 2010, and I lucked up and got a position at the YWCA of Wheeling okay. that let me encompass everything that I ever got to do. Like OVASA is now a part of my job. Okay. Um, my work with uh, the NAACP and Human Rights Commission is now a part of my job through the racial justice uh, aspect of my position. So I get to do things that that I used to just do in my free time. That I, I was like, these are events like. Um, Events that, that we've got to do that I'm the most proud of lately, we got to do a thing called a Hip Hop A Black Tie Affair. Oh, okay. So we have an art gallery here at, the, at Willing Heritage. So what we did, we got every artist that we could find, visual artist, and said, give me a piece related to, or, or th- the theme is hip hop. Okay. And uh, they made all these pieces from artwork to clay works to nice. anything you can think of. They made it with hip hop being the inspiration. Exactly. So that was one piece. And then the, on the side, we had a video showing of area rappers. Because in Will, you know, you throw a rock, you get eight rappers. Is that right? Yeah. Is so that they right? came and they did like acapella verses for me to yeah, show yeah. on this screen. And then we brought this guy down from Canada to. Uh, now, are all these uh, kids under 18 ever since? They're all in high school. The rappers? Yeah, not all of them. We had oh, a segment okay. of them. Okay, that but were, the, but it was the kids in Ovasa that were a part of this. Yeah, some oh, okay. of them. This like these are all just pieces that you let me do. I, like, I see. Opened, oh, okay. Yeah, the hip hop. Your I overall, opened it up your overall position at the Y. I see. Mm-hmm. I see. Good deal. But let and me ask you this real quick. You said you lucked up and um, was able to get this posi- the position mm-hmm. that you have now. Can you describe that luck up? Well, I, uh, like I said, I was a counselor, addiction counselor for okay. the longest up at Willing Park High School. Okay. And it was all based on grants. Okay. So, you know, grants can be fickle oh, sometimes. Yes. So oh, the yes. grant fell through, and I was waiting to see if the school system would just hire me flat out. Yes. And they didn't. Okay. So what I had to do was the agency that was the, uh, the agency for the grant, I had to start working for them in their human resource department. And oh, it was just a miserable time. Like, oh, I like okay. the agency. I love human resources. It's cool. I didn't want to work there. Okay. So I heard about a cultural diversity position here at the YWCA. Oh, and I applied, but it wasn't the, the, the position that, that they uh, presented when they yeah. were advertising the position. wasn't necessarily what it is now. I see. So then we interviewed. I interviewed with my boss. It was yeah. the most intense and extensive interview I've ever been on in my yeah. life. Yeah. And she let me know that she believed in me enough to give me the position and, and no cuff. She didn't handcuff yeah. me at all. Yeah. I brought in ideas that I thought were just abstract. Or and how long have you been in that position? I, I'm going on my fourth year. Okay. Is your boss still your boss? Mm-hmm. The same one? Oh, yeah. Do you, you want to give her a shout out? Oh, Lori Jones. Yeah, Lori Jones Lori in the Jones. YWCA. She, yeah. she really took right. a chance. And uh, she, what I love about her is she didn't stifle me in any way. Like we, right. we, there are events that we've done that I don't think anybody else would have, yeah. would have even attempted to do. Like we're doing right. this Friday, we're doing a filmmaker of color festival. Okay. So all filmmakers of color submit ten minute films this Friday. We're showing them. People right. can come down. We're gonna give them food and everything. I, I, I tell you, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing that. Uh, it's just amazing. There's a lot of things that you just talked about that I would love to be involved in, uh, or take a part of, or, yeah. or or know somebody that might. We just don't communicate. You know, yeah. things that we're doing together. You know, and it's it's just it's just debilitating to me. Well, but I'm um, glad you called me. Yeah, no, yeah, we we'll look. Yeah, we we'll link now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Now. And so um, I just want to thank you for no doing problem. this. Thank you. I'm hoping that we can do this again. Uh, again, peace, knowledge, and wisdom. Um, has a platform that's all about ideas, viewpoints, and 
showing and talking about the black experience. Black, the black community is not monolithic. We know yeah. that, that we're all different. We have all opinions. But I do believe we all want the same things. We just go about them in different ways. And I think if we was in contact with each other more, and we see what each other's passions are and what each other's gifts are, we, we would respect each other even more. Therefore, whenever we have a difference of opinion, it doesn't end in just not speaking or not communicating or not working together. It would end in saying, this is, this, this is my brother's point of view and this is mine. Mm -hmm. We can't work together on that, but we definitely gonna work together on this. Mm -hmm. and, and and all those things in between and so um, glad I met you oh, thank glad you. they got the audience got a chance to uh, listen to what you had to say and uh, we're gonna do this again definitely okay thank you thank no problem brother, brother Boogie how you doing good you're doing good last we left you you had uh, come to Wheeling to start your service and we know it started and and got going with your love of football yes helping out the uh, kids with baseball, yes, uh, the baseball league, and that led into you getting saving on into the football, which you, you always knew that was going to happen because yeah, that's what I'm sure when you found out you was having a son, I was hoping it was going to happen. Definitely, <laughs> <laughs> I tell uh, you, I tell you this much: we um, even before I go into football, real quick, yes, um, me and Phil Bledsoe. I don't know if you know who Phil Bledsoe. No, Phil. Okay, they, me and they, Phil. Uh, me and Phil. The Cavs of California. Yes, the Cavs. <laughs> Me and Phil took the first probably black, all black baseball team to Cooperstown. Is that which, right? Which was. Um, what do you mean you took them? Which, well, we packed them in the cars. I had six of them. <laughs> well, in my what car. I mean is to play or watch it? Pl to play. So you earned a trip there. We, we, well, you had to raise money because you know it costs a thousand dollars. Right. Don't you, gotta win, you don't you got to win your way there? You don't have to win your way to Cooperstown. But you have to earn your money and turn your money in and pay it before you can go. And you can be in the tournament. Yes, and then you get into the tournament. I see. And okay. So of course, you know, we packed us. We six deep in cars. And Is that we right? Got into Cooperstown. Well, what year was that? Do you remember? Woof. That was during the years of base football. So in that two thousand early two thousand era. Okay. Yeah, and we. Okay. And I mean, we got there, and those teams were like, "Whoa!" You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, all black baseball, little league yeah, team yeah. too. They thought they it played an international team. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a blast. They thought it was Dominican Republic. <laughs> yes, it, it, was, it was a blast. Yes, and that kind of started your fire for team coaching. Yes, yes, and, and dealing with the kids and coaching the kids. Yes, and it, it just continued to go and. All those kids now, you know, to play a lot of those baseball players played football with me at Little Patriots, and all those kids. That was way back then. And some of the kids before, they still call me to this day. If they get a yeah. problem, they call uh -huh. me. They'll call me if they if they somehow they reach me on Facebook, and that's where it all starts from there. You know. So let me ask you this: uh, What is it? What is your? Um, tell me what it's like, or tell no, no tell us. What's it like being a black coach in a dominantly white high school town, mm -hmm. Pee Wee football team, high school team? What's it like? Give me some pros and cons. The, the, uh, the pros of Little Patriots mm -hmm. is because I, I helped develop some of those young kids at an early age, you know, as, as men. Yes. And letting them know, it, you know, nothing's going to be easy. Yes. I mean, the black kids and white kids. And, you know, because we have some poor white kids on our team also. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. That wasn't just all the poor black kids, you know. Yeah. And there's, so, more, there's, more, there's more poor, poor white kids exactly. in America than there's poor white kids. Yes. And so, you know, I just told them, you know, hard work. And they, and they learned that growing up to work hard. And then they looked at me yeah. as a lot, of them, a lot of them are too young, but their mom and dad's knew of me. Yeah. So that's why a lot of them wanted them to come play with me. Right. was because of that. Now, they're also the ones that don't want them. To be because there was there was actually a lot of fight early on with little pages that oh you're in the black culture we don't want you around the, the black people uh, and so they they kind of shied away from the little patriots at an early age now you have your kid and the, the crazy part you mean hold well, on let me make sure I get this right you mean there was there was parents who didn't want their white kids playing on the patriots because there was too much of a culture sure. That they thought that they, was black. Just assume because they seen some. Because they seen some blacks. And and being that there's only 25 spots and 10 of them were black, 
to them, that's different than going yes. to school where there's 100 slots and only 10 blacks. You can go to that because there's not enough. Exactly. Uh, I see. And, and, and it was the craziest thing because we all t- we all laughed and we're thinking, there's 10 blacks on this team. The rest are white. <laughs> they only see. Yeah. And I said, we're majority white on exactly. this team. I said, and they were, and, and, they, and people gave us a fight about it, you know, but that's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. But once the, then those kids, like we have a kid, Austin Doris from Shady Side, yes. I coached. He went. He went on to go to um, Indiana University yeah, 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 and yeah, played, yeah. and then you know, and yeah, he was from Shady Side. I remember him. And remember. his mom and dad would drive him to Wheeling, and yeah. I coached him. And I mean, of course, he became. He was a star. So let me ask you real quick. You started off. You said the pros. What's the? Is there any pro? What's the? What's the pro of being black? Yes, I would. And I say the pro of being black mainly with our black kids. Okay. Were, they they can look up to me instead of always having you know a white coach head coach or you know because it, yes. it's been you know like me all my coaches were white exactly everyone and I had some great coaches that were white yeah put, you know, put and um so but, are you were you there from the beginning of the Patriots not not right at the beginning because that was Mike Lake and them they they started it I came years a few years after them five years. Probably five or six years or so. Okay. Yeah, because they were fairly new. Still, they were fairly new. Compared to some of the other teams yes. in the Still Valley League. Actually, yeah, but probably at least five or six years. I remember P.D. Simpson. P.D. P.D. was there. Yeah. Yep, Mikey. Yep, Mike yeah. Whatever P.D. Happened to P.D.? He's still around here. Is he around here? He's he still around here. He was a good dude here. as far as I knew from what Mike did. Yes, he was a good dude. Him and Mike both. Yeah. And that's where C.J. Goodwin and them all played. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and and, yeah. and he, Mike, actually he coached them. I got on C.J. with Perry because C.J. didn't want to play football. Dude, yeah. junior high or high school, right. and I, Perry had me talk to him. CJ probably remembers this. Yeah. I, had, I had to go talk with CJ. Yeah, yeah. Perry was dying for him to go play high school yeah, football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't play because he thought he was this freak basketball player. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So he finally ended up playing one year. Yep. But yep. yeah, and it's just that, that's the thing. Like CJ, we talk all the time. Yeah, yeah. I talk to him all the time. Elijah Bell, you know, yeah, so yeah. all those guys. They they call me. Well, we'll be we'll, 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 we'll go into that deep. <laughs> The next time oh, yes. you talk, we're yes. going to talk specifically. But let me get to the con. cons. The con. What's the cons of being a black coach in Wheeling Park? Yeah. And uh, Wheeling Patriots. Now you mentioned a little bit about some of the parents. The parents yeah. early. The, I, it was the it's the parents early. Right. In high school, you know, I think a lot. Me being Boogie Johnson. Yes. Helps me exactly. Because they know the kids, are, and, I, and I'm coaching the high school that I played at. Okay. So a lot of those parents, they don't give me too many problems. They think, uh, okay, listen, okay. listen to him. Yeah, right. Like right. listen to him. Okay. You know, so I don't. Now I know there's the stuff in the background going on. Yeah, but yeah. It's never brought never to comes me, to you. But I tell you what I do. What and and they all know black white, but my black players they know, and I told them because you know that ACT and SAT is a is a. It's, yeah. a, it's a rough one. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I've been on them, telling them, as a freshman, you start getting ready. Yeah. Sophomore, you're taking it. Yeah. I don't want to hear, oh, I missed it. Oh, I didn't left my ID. Right. I didn't have this. And, no, no. Now, how much are you able to get that part of it done? I, I, oh, I'm on them. I'm on them. And, and, they, and they know. And when I, I have dates of it, so I can go through that school. Is that right? And, and you can actually do that? Yes, at practice. Yeah. You've been doing that all the time? Pretty much oh, every year. Yes. Yeah. Well, I reckon yes. I, I commend you on that. Yes. Um, because and I'm sure it's a big help, and it's something that I think, if I was going to say, um, to, it's a no brainer probably for you. Yes. And I, I told him because you know, I wasn't, I wasn't some genius, and right. I knew the ACT was tough for me. Right. And I said. Listen, you cannot wait till you're a senior and take this test because you're going to go to a junior college or you're going to have to go to a, a, a prep school because you're not going to pass this test when you're first time. You're just, I, I mean, you're not. I hope you do. Now, I pray you do, but the chances are you're not, period. How long are you going to coach? <sighs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, at least until Amari right. graduates, huh? I'm hoping. I hope I go that long. Okay. I hope I can go that long. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know what I would do if I didn't. It would. It probably would hurt. It'd be tough a little bit because a lot of kids do look up to me to help them in ways. So you don't you, you don't really have no timetable. You're just doing it. Yes. So right yes. now you're just doing it. Mm-hmm. So um, whether or not uh, the, the press announcer 
whether or not one day he's going to say a head coach for the Willie Patriots is Daryl Boogie Johnson, that's not necessarily a goal. <laughs> no. But it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. I think we would like to see that. Yeah. I think we'd like to see that wrong. Oh, man. I'd love yeah. to see so, that. so that's an amen moment there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to see that. I, I think a lot of players would love to see that at some point. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to end on that note. We're going to end on that note that the uh, Ovasa, Ovasa yeah. is going to be huge and it's going to have a lot of Studentville participation in what it does. It's going to get some friends to right. Ovasa. And we're going to uh, look for a goal future. We're going to see how we can work on making sure that Daryl Boogie Johnson, head coach of Willing Patriots, <laughs> becomes a reality. Yeah. Because I think you got to coach there before you coach the Steelers. Yeah. <laughs> that gets you a resume. Yeah. I'm like, you, know, you got to coach, them, coach yeah. the Steelers. So. So okay, I, again, I'm I'm honored. I think the I think everybody's happy to have this. I think this was a great interview. Appreciate it, you guys standing by me and and, and uh, being cooperative because I don't know how to do this. I'm not that good at it, um, <laughs> but I'm learning. And yes. I've talked to a lot of interesting people, and I'm so happy I decided to do it because for me it's been great, and I yes. think everybody that watches loves it. And so we're going to see you guys both again. You guys, right? Yes, right? definitely. It's already on tape, so you got to do it. <laughs> yes, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Peace, my man. Knowledge yep. and wisdom. And we're out. Thank you guys. But don't forget, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and also hit that bell so you're notified whenever these come on. There's going to be a whole slew of videos and interviews that we're going to have this year. And I want everybody to get as much as much in as they can. And uh, peace. <laughs>